two best friends for life. <laughs> right? Who's made some super good friends here? Alright, I know everyone's tired and it's a little low energy, so I'm gonna need you to get, get with me on this, okay? We're gonna bring Natasha and Annie out, but first, right? It's gonna be a big warm-up. Ready? Like, you know, 
it adds another element um, to things when it's a, something that you've created yourself as well. Of course, every character I play is so near and dear to my heart, but it's really awesome to get something that came from your walking imagination and, and took such a, a village to create and got to work with such an amazing group of people on this. So it means a lot that everyone's hard work is, is recognized because we got to see how much work goes into it on, on the other side of the camera. Yeah, I think just echoing what Nat said, it, it just, it sort of lands home in a different way when we've had a different um, involvement in the project and it, it came from us initially, you know? So I think it's sort of, um, it just, it feels nice because you, you create these crazy things and kind of like throw them out and it's like, who knows how, where this is gonna land or how it's received. So to get feedback in a positive way, in that way, it helps to sort of feel confident, at least me anyway, moving forward to continue creating work and, Watch it. Yeah, it's like we threw spaghetti at a wall, and then people are eating it, the spaghetti. <laughs> I know. And like even the meatballs. I like, found like this more. Like, like don't okay. say meatballs. Like, oh, it's fine. Like, dust it off. We still eat it yeah, anyway. You know, like, let's go like, make some garlic bread cool. and just throw it in the mix too. Lasagna maybe. Cool. You okay? You guys yeah. haven't had lunch, <laughs> so we can move on. All right, let's 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 get serious. Okay. Okay. <laughs> challenges of bringing clairvoyant to the world. But 
uh, but yeah, I, uh, my hope and dream is if we do get to make it season two, is that we can like develop the characters more and, and, and see them more. Because we, we certainly have a whole treasure chest of character moments and traits that we can use for next time. Yeah. As we make it into this. <laughs> well, you two have collaborated so beautifully together. <laughs> Natasha, what have you learned from Annie? And Annie, what have you learned from Natasha? They're gonna cry. Jason, Sasha, Sabrin Rock, and Teresa Tova are your supporting cast and clairvoyant, and each are utterly delightful. What was it like working with a small but mighty cast, and how did you know they were perfect for these roles? Because they're perfect for these roles. Yeah. Um, well, we, we had the fortunate experience of uh, being involved in the casting process, and um, our director was also very involved um, in uh, some of the development and, and was privy to the scripts prior to going into auditions. So um, ultimately, you know, the decision was was hers because she was, you know, going to be working with people. And, but we were there and we got to read with the people that we would be working with. So it is, it was, yeah, it was such a joy to get to be on that side of things. And um, yeah, those three were just absolutely incredible in those roles. Yeah, it's it's it was so interesting to see that side of casting and how. Um, when you have chemistry with someone in person, it's just such an innate thing. I mean, I think much like how uh, Elise and I were cast together, I think when Sabrin hadn't actually, um, she didn't get to make the first round of auditions, and she was sort of like an after audition. So she came in to the callbacks, actually, and that was her first time auditioning. Um, and immediately she was just so nice to work with and so warm and really willing to improvise, which was something that was really important to me as well. And just such a team player, and so is Jason and then Toba. They both just, you know, came in already in character and, and were really great physical comedians and just really Yeah, Jason Jason brought some props into his audition. Into his audition. And we were all like, Who is this? I'm like, who is this bizarre man? And, we and yes. Him. We, yeah, he was great. He was great. Mm -hmm. 
Well, while clairvoyant is incredibly funny, I mean, like, laugh out loud, cry, pee your pants funny. Uh, well, at least for me, that was the situation. Um, but it has a lot of heart, and you, you dealt with some really important feminist issues, too, and including Ruby's decision to terminate her pregnancy. So why was that important for you to include in the series? Especially since it's really based on comedy. Yeah, well, I mean, I think all good comedies are rooted and grounded in reality, but also have that dramatic element. Like, you need a, a core of heart in order to sort of buy the payoff for laughter. And especially with what we were dealing with, the subject matter, we knew we wanted to go for the jokes and get a little loopy and goofy. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's a story about best friends. And best friends, if you've known each other long enough, you're going to go through some stuff It's two women. And I certainly didn't want to write um, thin, non-layered characters. So that involved delving into some, some heavier issues. Yeah. My only, as Natasha mentioned earlier, I mean, my only sort of, uh, not even regret, but it's, it is difficult when you're working in such a fast-paced medium that, like, we wanted to, I mean, we had, you know, versions of the script that even sort of, um, flesh some of those things out and some of those scenes in a greater way. I'd love to be able to do that, yeah, moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because it, it, you know, you sort of have to pick and choose what you do, and so overall it ended up being about the, the overall story arc and Claire's journey, but we would have loved to um, have that. But, you know, again, you have to sort of think on the fly and be creative, so one thing was when they cut some things out, we said, well, can we at least make it put a title card that says three weeks later so that we know there's been some time for Ruby to adjust from, from her breakup and things like that. So it was like little tricks like that in the moment that we, we thought to, to improve it. But I think, um, you know, just as Annie said, like we're three-dimensional people as humans in general. And, um, you know, we, a part of what makes the characters relatable is that they have a whole spectrum of experiences. Um, and then also we aren't archetypes, so I think it's possible for, you know, a character to be really wild and free, but then also really scared and vulnerable, or, you know, for Claire, who often seems like she's in control of things and very rational, to also be really afraid of her power and, and her truth and who she is, and, you know. There's also such a scary violation of human rights happening in North America right now, politically speaking, that um, I, it felt very important to me in some way um, to speak to that. And I want to stick with you because I want to give you a big congratulations for becoming a resident of the Canadian Film Center. Her background is very like 
old school, like some of the British greats, but also like um, some like <laughs> some like monks as well, some Buddhist monks. So like she's just this wild hippie woman, and we're just being thrown around out of our comfort zones. It's yeah, it's great as an actor to get to revisit your craft and just pull out of the industry for a bit and figure out you know why you're there again. If Claire Wyatt gets a second season. What are some things that you'd really like to explore? Oh, <coughs> so many. So many. So many. Well, um, we are currently applying for funding, so definitely exciting announcements for you. But if we were to make a season two, we have already um, talked about what the sort of plot and art would look like, art would look like and um, much like Annie said, there's a lot of terrible things happening in, in politics, and that's something we certainly would like to explore while keeping the show in the sort of absurdist, silly, fun universe, but we certainly want to touch on, on some of these violations and, and keep it as feminist as possible, um, definitely explore some themes of fighting some of the establishments and, and systems that we, we work in. We just want to expand the universe as well a little bit, so uh, introduce some new characters, perhaps, and and see them on a much more uh, extreme level, bigger and better. Yeah, for sure. All of all of what Nat said. I think it's. Um, I think given sort of at least what's you know constantly sort of uh, rolling across my news screen right now, it's really important for us also to to have fun entertainment that can really take us out of that. Yeah. So I think our, our challenge moving forward is gonna be, okay, what, what do we wanna talk about in a real way while also doing it in a fun way where we're not, like, I, I love me some Handmaid's Tale, but I like weep so hard after <laughs> every show. Like, I can only do so much at once, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we, we do wanna keep it light as well. Yeah. So there are important stories to tell, but something we were talking about is, you know, we have so much to say and we haven't had a voice for so long, but you know, as women, it's almost like this expectation now that we, we have to say something with our art, and like we certainly want to, but also it's like, let's show folks that women can be funny too, and like let's have a little escape, and, and we need to laugh as well. We definitely need to laugh. Because you can escape and still be in the moment. Absolutely, yeah. How can we Okay, what's the name of the fans for Clear Point? Do you have a do you have a fun name? We've never I don't think so. Okay, I we've been like saying little Sears for a while, but then I don't know. I feel like we need to put a poll now to the I, I feel like you guys need like to, to yeah. decide. Like I'm gonna get your shit in that Maybe with like N O T instead, like cosmonauts. Uh -huh. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, what can us cosmonauts <laughs> do to try to? I guess I know obviously you're, you're <coughs> applying for funding and stuff, but is there anything we can do to show our love and support that might help push things over the edge? Can you continue to share it? <laughs> share it, yeah. It helps so much. It means so much to have that yeah. and just keep spreading it around, you know? And it's really cool that people are still discovering it. We met so many people uh, over this weekend who were like, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm gonna come to your panel and I'm excited to see it. So that really uh, means the world. And, and, you know, I think it's the type of show that uh, all types of folks can, can watch as well. So, um, yeah, share with comedy lovers. And even if they've never seen any LGBTQ relationships on screen too, I think it's important for everyone to see it and have it be normalized. How about a musical episode? Yeah, if we can get Julie to be 
more into <laughs> to direct our musical episode than I feel like Natasha might be down to one. Just FYI that there was a struggle with the Spider-Man one. Oh, was that? I didn't, I didn't hear about no. that. No. Interesting. Didn't hear? No. I heard it was just a spin. Not a YouTube fan. Okay. No. okay. Do you ever want to play each other's roles? Because I would have a hard time not wanting to be both of these characters. That's so funny. I've never been asked that before. I've, I honestly, I haven't that before. thought that because the thing about these roles is because they came out of us. Literally, we pooped them out. Yeah. <laughs> they mine. I've never. Okay, okay, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we put our blood, sweat, and menstrual tears into this. This show. Wait. That was weird. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> menstrual tears. <laughs> so important. 
important to listen to people who are, and then for creators who are, to know that like, there are people who are willing to buddy up with you and, and help you out there. And uh, yeah, to just improvise. Like, were you really supposed to work at a, a lion safari? But we didn't have the budget. So we said, oh, we could afford the lion. <laughs> right, so then I became the lion. <laughs> See, we have this theme. <laughs> this theme going. We're just, we're cheap. Brown with expensive taste. <laughs> <laughs> Truer words were there. <laughs> All right, we're gonna open this up to the audience. So why don't you cue on up if you have a question.
like you, but maybe they're not ready to make your project, um, you have other ideas for them. And, and as he told me, he went into a meeting once and didn't have anything else prepared and started making up ideas. Um, what do you think, Dana? Pitch, well, pitch, so pitch lady extraordinaire. Pitch lady. Is that how you do it? <laughs>
King Lear. Ooh. As King Lear, Hell you, yeah. Natasha, and whatever daughter you want to play, which one's your favorite? <laughs> the one that dies, They're very the one that different. Dies, the They're very different. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's Reagan that's the, right? Reagan's middle, gone rolls old. That's oh, Cordelia. 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 Ooh, no, that's the one. I feel like you're looking at me like I'm well read and have studied Shakespeare. <laughs> right? Also, love King Lear and Cordelia. Love it because, like, like any chance to play a king, please, yes. But also, Dana, you have picked literally the oldest character <laughs> in the Shakespearean <laughs> canon that is reserved for ancient aging gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very okay. much. Hold on. Do it again in a heartbeat. Hope. 
hope too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, there's a lot, I guess there's a lot we could talk about with that one. Um, it's a great question, but one thing I will say is that moving into, so in, in pre-production, which is maybe like the three weeks directly leading up to shooting, there's a lot to be done. So Nat and I, as producers, were involved in all kinds of creative meetings with all the people involved leading up to that. But once we actually got to set to shoot the thing, um, our, our other producers uh, and director and rest of the supporting team were so good about allowing us to take off the producer hats, put on the actor hats for the days that we were doing that. Because it's, as an actor, it's very, it can be very sensitive work and we were moving so fast that they kind of wanted to help us separate us from some of the other, you know, things that might be going on behind scenes. Um, but yeah, then on days, like I had a day or two where I wasn't shooting and I got to come on set as a, as a producer and then would step into that role. So it was a nice, it was a nice balance actually. Yeah, just wearing so many hats. Um, I would certainly love to produce and, and show run again, uh, both Clairvoyant season two and, and other projects in the future. Um, I think my brain lets it more to that than directing myself and even, um, you know, writing. I'm, I'm an idea gal and I think that's why we work so well together as well as we really have different skills and we're able to really like truly collaborate in the truest sense of the word collaboration. Um, it was so, so great. And yeah, I think just as we answered before, like the challenges we face, we're just having to like kill off all our wacky ideas and, and cut stuff out. I think that's the hardest part, but ultimately it serves you know the greater good. Because if you add one thing in, or we have a longer script, we would have maybe had to look at a location and, and so on. So it's all about the balance, and then really trusting your your team as well. Oh, 
smart. Um, so yeah, I would take them on a wild trip that involved travel across yeah. the country. You're right. That's a good one. Like a, the great Canadian road trip movie that we've never seen, or like yeah, with a motorcycle, with like a sidecar. Sidecar. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Just really silly, or like a really beat up old Volkswagen, Xavier's van. Yes. That would be yes. really cool. Yeah. And they'd have a cut iguana. Sorry. Okay, that's all. <laughs> Named Icky Stardust. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, so I would want to know, what is your favorite line of dialogue that you've either written or spoken ever? Mary Floppins. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my favorite line of dialogue. Sorry. Thank you to the Clexicon staff and volunteers who made this all work.